Hello and welcome to this podcast from the Digital Research Video Project, organised by Suzanne Pilar-Birch through the Social Media Knowledge Exchange. In this video, we're going to find out how animal bones found in an island cave in the Adriatic Sea tell us about the movement of people during the last glacial maximum from research carried out by Pia Spry Marquez. 23,000 years ago, towards the end of the Old Stone Age, also known as the Upper Paleolithic, the weather in Europe and in many parts of the world took a turn for the worse. Temperatures plummeted, rain levels fell and a massive ice sheet slowly advanced to cover most of northern Europe and stayed there for the next few thousand years. We know that during this glacial period, many animal and plant species sought shelter in Europe's three warmer southern peninsulas, Iberia, Italy and the Balkans. But the question is, where did the people go? Archaeological material recovered from this time period has shown that a large number of our ancestors retreated to Franco-Cantabria, an area covering the southwest of France and northeastern tip of Spain. But was this the only area where people travelled to to escape the worst of the weather? Let's go back to the growing ice sheet. In order to grow, the ice mass had to take up water, causing sea levels to fall. At its maximum, when the ice reached as far south as Germany, sea levels were up to 120 metres lower than today. That's approximately the same height as the London Eye. As a result, areas of shallow sea became exposed and Europe's shape was very different to the one we recognise. It could be that humans lived on these exposed shores during the Paleolithic, but we have no evidence of their settlements because it's now all underwater. This is where the archaeological cave site of Vela Spila on the island of Corchula in the Adriatic Sea comes in. Because the Adriatic is so shallow, mostly between 20 and 200 metres deep, when sea levels fell at the glacial peak, most of the land between what are now Italy and Croatia was exposed. So, whereas Corchula is now an island, during the Paleolithic it would have been a high point on the ancient Adriatic plain. By studying the archaeological material excavated at Vela Spila, archaeologists can find out how submerged the Adriatic Plain may have been, and if, like Franco-Cantabria, it also sustained large human populations. Animal bones left behind by the Paleolithic people at Vela Spila show the Adriatic was rich in resources. Many species, including red deer, wild ass, wild boar, wolf and even lynx were hunted. Many of the red deer and wild ass bones found had fresh breaks, suggesting that they were broken soon after the animals were hunted. So why would the people have done this? Well, archaeologists think it was to get at the soft, fatty marrow inside the bones, a great source of energy during the cold Paleolithic. But although these people were eating the marrow, there's no evidence for meat butchery and consumption at Vela Spila. Although many of the bones had cut marks to their surfaces, judging by their location and direction, they're probably from skinning the animals and not the butchery of meat. So it seems like eating the marrow at the site was more of a snacking activity rather than the main food source. Judging by all this evidence, archaeologists think that Vela Spila was a strategic hunting base camp only visited at different points during the year, and not a permanent settlement. Skins were processed here and animal carcasses were prepared whilst people munched away on marrow before they were taken somewhere else more important. The question remaining for archaeologists is, where were these more permanent bases located? And the answer to this probably lies somewhere at the bottom of the Adriatic, waiting to be found. I hope you've enjoyed this digital research video podcast. For more information, check out www.smke.org.